Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, one thing that crops up on this channel all the time is of course range. And I can guarantee that I will get a comment in pretty much every every video I do, certainly any that mentions range, from an Audi diesel driver that says that until they can get an electric vehicle that matches their range, 600 miles to a tank, they're not interested. And I am not genuinely bashing Audi drivers on this one. It, co it crops up all the time. I have an Audi diesel and it can do this much. That's what I want in an electric vehicle. That's the whole purpose of this video and my brilliant whiteboard behind me to try and make people reevaluate what they actually need in terms of range. Because it's all right saying I have 600 miles, but if you never ever use it, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute, what's the point in having it? What's the point in electric car terms of paying for something that you're never going to use? So that's what this video is ultimately about. How much range do you really need? Now I've looked at various studies to give us all the facts that hopefully I'll need to fill in this table and then, well, just watch the video, you'll understand what I mean. The first one is an RAC study, I've got it right here, that they did and they asked what the longest drivers are prepared to go without taking a break. So are you prepared to drive two hours without a break? Four, six, eight, you get the point. Uh, this I think is quite interesting because a lot of people out there, I'll go back to the Audi driver again, the 600 miles to a tank. 600 miles will take you even without traffic, what, 10, 11, maybe 12 hours in the UK to drive? Nobody drives that amount of time without stopping at least once. It'd be dangerous beyond belief to themselves and to other road users due to driver fatigue, let alone needing a pee or something to eat. Um, so how much do people actually drive according to this study? And then I'll come to others in a minute. Now, the first one, the two hours amount, 99% of people say they're happy to drive at least two hours. I think this pretty much is a given. We all do that. Hell, in bad traffic, it probably takes me that long to get home from work some days. So that, that that's, that's fairly ordinary, but I will come back to that two hour figure in a minute because there is something that is worth mentioning. Uh, three hours or more, we have 90% of drivers are willing to drive at least three hours. Four hours is a big drop, 58% of people say they're happy to drive beyond that. So a lot of people like to stop at the three, four hour mark. We have another significant drop of five hours at 28%. So clearly it's going down, down, down. And we're getting to the point where people are basically just boasting that they can drive this long without stopping. But I'll fill it in anyway. They are 17% of drivers are willing to take the risk of driving at least six hours without stopping. Then we get to 10% and finally eight hours, 8%. Now remember, this isn't a professional driver. This isn't someone that's driving for a living. This is people basically going on holiday, doing a long journey. And quite frankly, if you're in this bottom kind of bracket, seven or eight hours, certainly, maybe six, that's idiotic beyond belief. Doing seven, eight hours non-stop with one driver, I think that is, is too dangerous. Seven, eight hours is a full working day, non-stop driving. It's a big deal. It's dangerous, again, for you and the people around you. I know somebody, I'm very close to someone who got tired on a long journey and they ended up basically falling asleep at the wheel, flipping their car on a dual carriageway. They survived, thankfully, but it just shows you how dangerous it can be. People don't take it as seriously as something like drink driving, for example, but it is a big thing. Now I mentioned the two hour mark and that I would come back to it. And that's because that is what the highway code in the UK recommends that you should drive no more than before taking a break. Rule 91, this is a UK highway code, of course. Rule 91 of the code states that a break of at least 15 minutes should be taken every two hours with regular brakes essential in keeping a driver focused, alert, and above all safe on the road. Now, I think it's pretty much a given that most people out there will be going, I don't do that. I don't do that personally, uh, rarely anyway, certainly on a journey that's three, four, five hours uh, in total distance. 
I don't think I will probably stop after two hours. I mean, with traffic, that's, that's, that's barely a journey, is it? Now, obviously, that's the highway code, which, as I said, most people probably do ignore. But within the EU, this is a direct quote from this study, within the EU, even people who drive for a living are not permitted to, by law, to drive for any more than four and a half hours before stopping, which is roughly about there. Now, for me, that's about right. I think four and a half hours is enough to get a good part of the journey over with and a lot of journeys completed, but not too long. I guess it depends on if you've been working all day or not, but ultimately, if you're just basically waking up and going on a journey and you've had a good sleep, four and a half hours is about right for me, which I think this study kind of shows there's a significant drop between four and five hours. Now, I'm pretty sure that's just for professional drivers like HGV coach drivers, not everyone in general. But there is a reason why professional drivers, HGV drivers, can only drive for four and a half hours maximum by law, and that's because any longer would be dangerous. So once we're getting into seven, eight hours of driving, that's immensely stupid, probably. It is, well, not probably, it is. It is immensely stupid because that's nearly double the, uh, <laughs> the legal amount for a professional driver. So I guess what you need to do now is look at this and say, well, where am I? You know, be honest with yourself. How often have you driven more than four hours in the last 12 months? Is it once? Is it twice? Is it many times? From that, we can probably gauge roughly how far you can realistically drive, given the limit you've just imposed on yourself. If you say, I never drive more than four hours, I get bladder anxiety well before we get to five, six hours, certainly, then... How far could you realistically travel in the UK, because this is a UK video, how far could you realistically travel without stopping? As in, you're the reason to stop, not the car. For this, I'm going to turn to a Department for Transport study, basically the UK government, and that gives us the average speeds on UK roads. And according to them, the average speed for the strategic road network of this country is 59.2 miles per hour apologies for my writing so 59.2 miles per hour a strategic road network is basically motorways major a roads and dual carriageways for all the other a roads so this is i guess all other roads other than residential streets things like that the average speed is just a paltry 25.4 miles per hour now, the Strategic Road Network carries about a third of all traffic, but only accounts for about 2% of all roads. But that is what you will traditionally be using if you're doing a long journey. So that's what I'm going to mainly go off. I'm not going to average these and then use that. What I'm going to pick is 55 miles per hour in terms of the average speed that you can achieve in the UK on a very quiet day, nighttime, things like that. Um, and from that we can figure out how far you can drive in two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. Now, of course, people will have a mixture of this, 25 miles per hour on average, and that at 59. So this 55 is pretty much the best case scenario. It's nighttime driving. If you live near a motorway and your destination is just off a motorway. So there's not many people that without doing silly things like breaking the speed limit, which I know full well, nobody watching this channel ever does. My view is do not break the speed limit, do they? <clears throat> um, 55 miles per hour as an average, I think is about right. And feel free to look on Google Maps at various journeys that you do and then figure out the average miles. It's probably gonna be like that. Obviously, if you're one of those drivers that weaves in and out, undertakes people and does 100 mile an hour on the motorway, that's probably gonna be higher than that, but you're a bit of a, I'm not gonna say the word. So to be ultra generous, because some people will say, I do long journeys all the time. I can beat 55 miles per hour. I'm gonna do that times the hours add 20. So in this case, we have 130 miles if you do no, no more than two hours of continuous driving and then have a break. Three hours, of course, would be 185 miles. Four hours, using my maths brain now, would be 240 miles. Five hours. 295 miles, yeah, get my two right. Six hours, if you really do want to drive six hours non-stop, and I guess we've all done it, then we're looking at 350 miles is the furthest you can travel. 405, 
Again, with that added 20, remember, and eight would bring us to 460 miles. So this is where you need to look at this table and think, where am I? If you drive four hours, for example, and then have a break, you never drive more than four hours, as 58% of people admit to, then the most you're ever likely to be able to drive is 240 miles, even under very, very light traffic and you're near motorways, you're coming off motorways, things like that, fast roads. So if you are Mr. Audi driver, and be honest with yourself now, and you think you need 600 miles of range, you only do at most 240 miles before you stop anyway. You are the reason it stops, not the car. And that's what I'm trying to make people reevaluate here. Most people on the motorway network right now in petrol diesel cars are stopping because they need to, not because the car needs to. That's the whole point at this. You need to kind of reevaluate what you've had because it's not the same thing. Just again, to put this into a little bit of context, London to Edinburgh is about, well, just shy of 400 miles according to Google. So that's centre of London to centre of Edinburgh. And it, it reckons about seven and a quarter hours to do just under 400 miles. So it is about the right sort of guesstimation in terms of what you can do on a quiet day. I remember driving to my parents' house once, which is about 260 miles away, and it was closer to the 25 miles per hour average than the 55, mainly due to roadworks, traffic, and all the usual stuff we have to put up with. It'd be interesting to know what people in other countries achieve. I don't just mean what you do when you're trying to boast about it. I mean, what is the average in your country? America, for example, which this isn't really about, but I will mention in a second, much bigger distances between towns, places, and you know villages, that sort of stuff. Um, so this is very UK centric, but this still applies. The driver, even an American one, will get tired at the same sort of time frame as a UK one or a European one. So the maximum amount of range that you would realistically need is it should be logically the same, unless you're willing to drive for longer, but then you're risking getting tired and having a crash. Now I said at the beginning, the whole purpose of this video is to make you reevaluate what you believe you need in terms of range. But let me make this extremely clear. This is the worst case scenario. The amount of times, let's say if you're this person here, I do not more than four hours of driving, so you think, well, I need a car that can do at least 240 miles in the real world, on the motorway, in winter. But you won't, because the vast majority of people will only do that journey twice a year, three times a year, something like that. Now, with electric vehicles as it stands, they are more expensive than petrol cars. I say this time and time again, according to the CEO of Volkswagen himself, we will achieve price parity by 2025. They will be the same price as the equivalent petrol car. But for now, they are more expensive. And in terms of range, you pay for that range. You know, the more batteries, the more expensive the car is. So what I'm going to try and get across is that yes, you may be able to do that journey if you have a long range EV right now without stopping at all. But if it's something you only do two or three times a year, what's the point? I'd rather stop uh, you know, what would be, what, three times a year on a journey, maybe, well, six there and back. If it means I don't have to spend another few thousand pounds to get that range in the first place, eventually it will be a problem and all EVs will probably be long range. They will probably do something like this without breaking a sweat. But for now, let's take the Model 3, for example. It's roughly, is it six or seven thousand pounds more than the standard range? And you'll get about another, what, 80 miles, 90 miles of range. What's the point in paying another six, seven thousand pounds just so you can do that twice year journey without stopping? You might as well save your money and think, well, I'm going to have to stop, which ultimately is what the highway code recommends anyway. So that's up to you. If you can afford the long range car, then of course you're going to go for it because you've got it there. But the original premise of this video still stands. The range that you probably think you need isn't probably true. Worst case scenario, not average. Most people will be doing, what, 10 miles to go at shops and back, 20 for work, something like that. If you look at the UK averages, this will never be a thing. People mention it all the time. We only do, I think, 12 miles a day on average in the UK. Why would you need something that can do five, 600 miles on a single charge if you're doing even 20, 30, 50 miles a day? 
Everyone is different and there are exceptions to every rule. So you don't have to tell me if you are that exception. But that's the whole point of this. Has it worked? Has it done its job? Have you re-evaluated what range, if you don't have an EV anyway, that you actually need? If you do have an EV, have you re-evaluated what you thought? Have you thought, well, actually, I don't know why I thought I needed that amount of range because I almost never go above 30 miles a day or 50 miles a day or whatever. Even building in battery degradation, I believe that if you have a, let's say, a Kia e Nero, which will do about 250 miles in the real world. So that means you can drive four hours in a Kia e Nero without stopping, no problems at all. But if that's, again, a twice a year journey, is it worth the extra to get that range? Only you can answer that. Let me give you a scenario. We have done the North Coast 500 many times in electric and petrol cars. When we did it in the electric car, uh, a Kia e Nero, that was the last one we did in, I think. Yes, it was. I think we stopped about halfway, because it's a 400-ish mile journey for us. We stopped about halfway to charge, get something to eat, and then went on to Inverness, which is the start of the North Coast. Journey complete, one stop. When we did it in the petrol car, in fact, we've done it a few times in a petrol car, we stopped at the same place to get something to eat. Because it's such a long journey, we wanted to stop for our own benefit, not for the cars. So whether it was an electric car or a petrol car, the journey was the same. Don't think what you have is what you need, because how often do you use that full tank of petrol? Most people I know usually just fill it up to half anyway, or never let it go get below half. But either way, they're only using half a tank at any one time. It's always nice, I think, from anyone's point of view to have that backup, to know that you've got that range. But if you've never used it, and genuinely now, look at yourself, look at your car, look at your journeys, how often do you use a full tank of fuel without stopping? That's hopefully what you'll get from this uh, immensely interesting video. Uh, as usual, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. It really does help me get more cool whiteboard stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon.